So, just to explain this a bit further, in a sense, you have economic system here, right, which is based upon social relations, human resources, means of production, and material resources. The point that we're emphasizing here is that you can create any economic system that you want, yeah, once you have control over these factors. Your social relations, yeah, which means that your your you, how you relate to how we relate to each other is based upon our own culture. We have control over it. Human resources, yeah, which essentially is our intellect and our labor. Yes, our intellect and our labor currently, and for the last five hundred years, has served the development of Europe, European people, and European civilization. African intellect has served European civilization. African labor has served European civilization. Means of production, this is that's what it says on the tin, this is the means through which we produce, yes? Essential to this is land, yes? Um, you know what I'm saying? Land, yeah, in particular, um, and all the things that facilitate the production, factories and them kind of things there, facilitate, facilitate the production um, of goods, services, and resources. And then also material resources, yeah? Now we separate, we tend to separate land from material resources because of the fundamentality of land, yeah? Land is the essential material resource. It, it plays a particular kind of role in an economy, but also, not just in an economy, but also in a political context because uh, being a people and being able to operate and relate and develop a social uh, relationship as a people is reliant upon uh, us being able to uh, have custodianship over areas of land that are recognizably ours, okay? Um, and so politically speaking, as they say, land is the basis of independence. And all of this is defined by culture, okay? So I hope that we're, that we're seeing the flaw, the fundamental flaw in, in reducing culture to the arts, to the food, just to the language. I hope we're seeing that, yeah? There's an organic and inseparable relationship between culture um, and, a, and an economic system, okay? So, let's look at now how we would define social relationship as African people. Yeah, and we understand that this concept called Ubuntu, yes, um, coming out of this um, southern, the, the so-called Bantu languages um, spoken in East, Central and Southern Africa, this concept called Ubuntu, as explained um, by the phrase Umuntu Ungumuntu Ungabantu in Zulu, um, which means a person is a person because they are people or I am because we are. And since we are, therefore I am. We often make reference to the fact that Africa is a diverse place with diverse cultures. This is true. But I find that oftentimes people use this um, as a, a tool to divide us and to negate the idea of African unity. I want to humbly suggest that there is no African culture that does not have a people-centered uh, cultural ethos that is not people-centered in terms of how it organizes itself politically and economically um, and that African cultures have been retarded yeah from this particular uh, ideal and ethos of development by European civilization so if anybody can name me yes um an African culture an African indigenous system yeah of social organization economics and politics that is not essentially people focused that 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 does not have a, um, a a communal value system a collective identity at its center as opposed to an individualist identity i love to hear about it please let me know in the comment section okay so the point is that if economics is essentially yeah um about social relations now an ubuntu is the uh, central ontological feature of African culture. In other words, the African sense of self, the nature of being as defined by African people is in relation to peoplehood, collectives of people and our relationship with each other. How does that impact what we develop economically and how we develop uh, economically? This is the question that we want to go forward and answer. And one of the examples of this um, can be found in this concept of ujamaa, yeah, a word 
in the Swahili language, which translates as familyhood um, and cooperative economics and communality. It literally means familyhood. But the word, imagine now, understand now that the word that literally means familyhood has an economic application. Yeah, it is a word that relates to the social, the economic organization of a society. Okay, and this was given expression by um, various people throughout our history, uh, most expressly by Baba Julius Nyerere, and we're going to come back to that. But we're going to look at now a few examples of how African liberation movements have sought to organize themselves economically based upon a people centered approach to solving our problems. Okay, so the first one we're going to give is the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, the organization founded by the prophet Marcus Mazaya Garvey. And I know that many of you yeah, who are watching, who are particularly inclined to uh, socialism, communism or left politics in general, many of you um, have heard, uh, some of you have been promoting the idea that Marcus Garvey was a capitalist. Yes. Um, stay tuned because in between June, July and the month of Messiah, August, um, I'm going to be doing a series on Papa Garvey. Um, and within that, we're going to be doing a presentation on the economics of Marcus Messiah Garvey and answering the question, was Marcus Garvey a capitalist? You know what I'm saying? But for now, all I'm going to state is that the economic model yeah, of the UNIA was not capitalism, but actually cooperative economics. Yeah. So we have various examples here. The Negro Factories Corporation, um, the Black Cross Nurses, um, the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation and the Liberia Program. OK. I'm not going to go into in depth into all of these things, but except to say that all of these programs here yeah, were designed on a cooperative basis. In other words, the, 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 these ventures were owned by the African people of the world. They were not the domain of Papa Garvey himself or a, or a board of directors. The, the organization itself, the people of the organization, the masses of the organization and the African world who contributed to building these institutions via buying shares in the core, in the organization or paying their dues as members of the organization yes owned the institutions themselves the negro factors corporation was um was a cooperative they use the word corporation but it was actually more cooperative of various different businesses under one umbrella yes and so the people that funded that labored in in the corporation owned the corporation the corporation was not owned by Papa Garvey as the head of the organization. Okay, the, the Black Cross Nurses, which was a, a, a health and welfare institution, was funded and developed primarily by the women of the organization on behalf of the African people of the world and was funded by the dues that were paid by the members um, of the UNIA ACL. Um, the Black Star Line, again, probably the most well-known economic venture of the UNIA ACL, um, was designed for the sake of uh, developing commerce and trade across um, the African diaspora, yeah, and was um, only possible because millions of African people around the world bought shares in the Black Star Line and therefore had ownership of the Black Star Line uh, Steamship Corporation and the Liberia Program of the UNIA, uh, in which basically they, they were trying to relocate the headquarters from New York to Liberia to have a power base on the African continent. But this was a program whereby they had a $2 million development program and were able to send um, an estimated amount of $50,000 uh, worth of um, agro and industrial equipment to Liberia in 1924 for the purpose of um, developing on some land that they had bought and um, developing a cooperative um, agricultural uh, system on that land, an industrial system on that land. And they, they were looking to relocate a certain number of families, not individuals now, but families yeah, to the land to help develop and industrialize um, in Liberia as a basis from which to do the same thing across the African continent. Again, all of these programs were owned um, by masses of African people and not individuals or uh, a board of directors or anything like that, okay? All right. Um